right there when I was holding pressure on that groin, praying for it to stop bleeding, uh, only then did I realize that the value of being over the femoral head. You are now listening to Sorel Gore, 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 MD. Gore, MD. Gore, Gore, MD. All right, so let's continue the conversation on femoral arterial axis. So I told you I'd tell you guys a quote-unquote tale of woe. All right? This is something that really happened. This is something that uh, proved to me what the most important thing about femoral arterial axis is. So uh, how's it go? You know, so there was this case, right? So year old female, uh, pretty sick, you know, chronically ill, peripheral arterial disease. So this is a PAD case that I did. Um, so she comes in, she had an outside hospital stenting, all right? She got stenting of her left SFA, uh, SFA down to the below knee popliteal, all right? So some people call this like a full metal jacket. She got one of the newer stents on the market, and I don't know if it was a few weeks or a few months, but she comes in to our hospital now, and those stents are thrombosed. So what to do? Well, basically you do a lysis procedure to start. So get access to the uh, right common femoral, because we're going to the left extremity. So right common femoral arterial access, up and over sheath. You get a wire through the obstruction, and then you do a uh, lysis. All right? You put a multi-side hole catheter. This is sort of like a uh, sort of like a garden hose with all the holes punched in it. So it kind of allows a lot of water to leak out. Well, in this case, it allows a lot of the lytic agent to leak out. The lytic agent that we're talking about is uh, TPA, tissue plasminogen activator. All right? So she was dripped overnight an attempt to break up that clot inside the stent and then um, you know, open up open up blood flow to her leg and improve blood flow to her lower extremity. So that went on overnight, coming into the next day. So she was dripped in the ICU. Comes back, uh, angiogram is performed, and it shows that there is still obstruction in those stents. Right, those stents have kind of a thick, fibrotic, uh, occlusive material in there. Um, you cannot dissolve it with the TPA. And uh, what's the next step? The next step is what I learned that day is actually to try to uh, destroy that tissue with another device. So the thing that is indicated for instant restenosis with something that's thrombotic is a laser. All right, so literally a laser, We're talking about an eczema laser. All right, this is a laser that is delivered through a catheter and it can break up, uh, you know, uh, hard fibrotic thrombotic debris inside of a stent. So this was actually kind of really crazy. Um, you know, we didn't really, we didn't use a laser a lot where we were working at. Uh, we basically went on a laser chase. So literally, there was me and, and several other adults, and we're literally searching the hospital trying to find a atherectomy laser. So future reference, where you find this is usually in the cardiology department, interventional cardiology. So we found the laser. Uh, it came with, it sort of, the person was already there. There was this representative for the laser. And she was way more interested in using laser than I think even we were. But anyway, so we're, we're dragging around this laser. This thing's like the size of a lawnmower, like a, a riding lawnmower. So we're dragging this thing through the hospital. We're trying to figure out how do we get the patient in an x-ray room with the laser and with the device to do the treatment. This was actually kind of hard to do, all right? The laser needed a special wall plug. You couldn't just plug this into the wall like uh, Xbox or something like that. And so we had to switch rooms. So now we're kind of in this totally different room. We're in the OR, all right, in, a, in one of their rooms. This is a really nice room, by the way. This is a, in the OR. There's this fluoro suite, really nice fluoro suite, you know, big, capacious, really nice monitors. Uh, we got the laser there. We got the patient there. She's got the sheath in. There's also an additional plan is that we're going to use, we're basically going all out. We're not only doing the laser, we're also then going to use a drug-coated balloon to uh, put, some, put some medicine into that clot to prevent uh, uh, rethrombosis of that, of that stent. So we got this whole plan and we're ready to go. One thing I remember, so we had the right common femoral ax arterial access there, right? That's kind of the point of this whole story is that we had that right common femoral arterial access. Um, it started out, I think, a five or six French sheath. For either the um, laser catheter or for the drug cutter balloon catheter, we had to upsize the sheath. All right, and so this is what I'm talking about. You don't know uh, in the intervention where it's going to go. You don't know where the sheath size is going to go. So we actually had to take that sheath and upsize it to an 8 French sheath. So through that sheath, we did the laser, did the drug-coated balloon. We're getting ready to finish. And uh, for an 8 French closure device, there's kind of a couple options. So we went to use a closure device, a really nice closure device called a ProGlide ProClose. This is a suture-mediated uh, closure device. Um, but what happened was the closure device failed. So right there and then, the closure device failed. I saw her groin filling up with blood blood squirting out of that that eight French size hole like crazy 
And so remember, this is an 8 French sheet, so the actual size of the hole is probably like 10 French. So something like, almost like 3 or 4 millimeters hole in her right common femoral artery. So there's like a 3 or 4 millimeter hole in her right common femoral artery. So this thing is gushing blood like crazy, all right? So attending looks at me and said, hey, you're going to have to hold pressure, and he walks off. So there I am, and I'm standing there holding pressure on this groin, and it is ridiculous, all right? I can, I can feel the blood pulsating out of there, wanting to come out of that hole. The only reason I would be able to control that bleeding at that time was because that stick was perfectly over the femoral head. And that's right there, right there when I was holding pressure on that groin, praying for it to stop bleeding. Uh, only then did I realize that the value of being over the femoral head. You know, you don't know where your intervention is going to go. You know, most interventions, you start off with a 5 French sheath. It might go to an 8 French sheath. It might go to a 10 French sheath. You know, you just don't know. Um, the closure device might work, but it might not. And um, if it doesn't work, you're going to want to make sure that you can hold pressure on and control that vessel, all right, as an interventionalist. Now, it's different if you're a surgeon, but as an interventionalist, you want to be able to control that groin. That means you were right over the femoral head. So there I was holding a ton of pressure on that, on that groin. Two fingers, just like I was taught, you know, above and then one finger below, right on that femoral head, holding that uh, vessel closed. And after only about two hours, uh, it took for that thing to thrombose. Uh, I mean, basically closed for that vessel to clot off. And uh, that was a learning experience, all right? That is where it really finally clicked to me. Um, I didn't think I'd ever have that experience. I did have that experience. Uh, some of you guys out there, your first 50 sticks, your first 100 sticks, will probably never go like that. This was a stick probably like 200 some, and it went like that. And that's when I finally clicked and I finally realized the value of being over the femoral head. So always remember, localize the femoral head. Uh, uh, document your stick. When you stick and you slide the, the microwire in, document fluoroscopically that you're over the femoral head. And uh, hopefully you're never going to be in a situation like that. All right, so that's my piece. That's what I got to say about femoral arterial access. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Struggle on B. I'll catch you guys later.